Lian Bu Chun, Linking Steps Boxing. Hey everybody, this is Vincent Tung, the Wandering Warrior. Now this is part three of the Lian Bu Chun series, where I dive into the form, its applications, and now in part three, the actual skills, the strategies, the tactics behind its use. Now in part two, I deduced that this was mostly striking with some grip breaks and qin na, or seizing and locking. I'll tell you exactly how I analyzed this form and how I came to that conclusion, as well as how to deduce the skills involved in using these movements and techniques. The origins of Lian Bu Chun are a little bit of a mystery. I've heard that it has originated from Sichuan province and was called Lian Bu Chun, practicing footwork boxing. It was said to have been brought to the Zhongyang Guosu Guan, the National Martial Arts Academy of China, by a coach named Liu Chongjun, and after some research, he determined it was dragon boxing of the five Shaolin fists. It had become part of the Jingwu Athletic Association's curriculum, and thanks to its involvement in Guosu in Nanjing, it was also brought to Taiwan with the Kuomintang. And thus, there are probably millions of people who have practiced this form. With the nationalization of the martial arts, we see the collecting of many skills. However, with the gentrification of society, we also see the loss of a lot of combat knowledge. My method for understanding the Chun has been simple, but detailed. A lot of people who try to make the movements and forms work in combat, so to speak, often change them quite a bit. I try not to do that. I take it that this form would have been the set of skills being reviewed by somebody who knew how to fight at the end of the Qing dynasty and used it to protect themselves or to kill people, then the movements should work, basically. One thing we have to understand about Tao Lu or forms is that they often leave out key nuances in footwork, such as angling. They also leave out a lot of the sense of timing. We also must know that a movement that has one focal point for the issuance of force is likely a strike. Where there are three, it's likely a throw. And when it's somewhere in the middle, where the hands are both occupied on one point, it's often some kind of locking. We also need to recognize that a form is going to show an ideal state for issuing the power or the full range of emotion. It doesn't always look that perfect in an actual fight. Using those guidelines that I explained earlier, I went through the form movement by movement, felt out where the force was being issued and how it was being used, as well as what the enemy would be responding with. So for example, the beginning move, kwa bu ping zang, crossing step, flat palm. There's no way you would use a flat palm to attack someone's midsection after grabbing low unless perhaps you're grabbing their leg and then pushing them over. And of course, with that lunge with the bow stance, that makes perfect sense. You are grabbing their leg, pushing them over your knee, and therefore it's a throw. Number five, Jin Bu Ping Zhang, enter step flat palm, also plays out similarly, but has some kind of defensive movement in the beginning that looks like a kick defense, and then followed up by the same motion. Something to mention about this Lian Bu Chun striking. Take a look at number three, four, Zhuan Shen Kai Zhou, Yi Bu Chu Da. Take a look at number six and eight, Sang Bu Gua Da, Sang Bu Pao Da. And take a look at 35, Hui Shen Cai Da, Pluck Hit. The third and fourth movement make us think that the fighting stance of Lian Bu Chun is actually very similar to other northern Chinese martial arts, and that it's actually just an opening, pairing, and striking tactic. 
This gives you a way to engage somebody's name or inside. Now, obviously, there's the inside and there's the outside. And this is a high-level target, striking towards the face. But uh, you could also strike to the midsection. And that movement is shown in number 35, Hui Shen Cai Da. The Gua movement, or Hang, which is the upper block, is also a way of getting on the inside. So you see this pugilist has a way of depressing the arms to get on the inside, of pulling the arm out to get on the inside, and also of just covering and entering. And he immediately follows up this attack on the inside with an arm lock, qin na, a, in fact in this case targeting the elbow. Now, although the form shows this being done in a straight line going backwards, and it can be done this way, I've personally found more success in taking an angle and then taking a retreating step. One of the most famous ways that this form uh, moves to the outside but then attacks inside and low is with the Liao Ying series of moves. This is also followed up by the attack on the elbow with Qin Na. Another thing to point out is if you advance deep into your stance, not only do you have a better chance of hitting their groin, but you also have a better chance of following it up with the elbow lock. The Qin Na is not always meant to break their arm, but if it doesn't, it will elicit a reaction from them. We see this very clearly in movement 9 and 11. So here with Cai Duan, we see trying to break the arm. If it doesn't work, Mandarin duck hands, ducks move in pairs, and then you go in, a palm strike, which could also be a throw, uh, but if it is blocked, then a low body shot. They say you can't catch punches, but if you can punch into their punch, then you've got a chance there. None of this works without the aggressive footwork. So we see changing levels and varying the targets, which is a good tactic, as well as specific handwork and chasing the outside in this particular instance which ends in movement 14, Tun Tiao Duan Da. And so there are various ways here of attacking the inside and the outside with various strikes and elbow locks. 17 to 20 is similar, but first we have to talk about 17, which is Fan Qing Ying Feng. Fan is the counter or reverse. Qin is the same Qin and Qin Na, the seize and lock. Ying Feng, catch a wind. Well, it looks like a chopping fist. Here we get into the idea that this guy doesn't like to get grabbed, uh, especially not in his terms. And the way that the arm is moving back only really makes sense if it is a big wiping motion or you are breaking someone's grip. Now, with the chop, you can, you can strike their elbow, you can strike their neck, uh, and it works on either side. But I believe it is primarily a left hand grabbing your left hand situation. Remember, chopping down on someone's neck, jaw, collarbone, or even their elbow joint is sure to cause some damage. The use of the forearm in chopping also means that you can use it as a frame against an incoming opponent trying to wrestle you. All right, now after the first Fan Qing Ying Feng, the counter to the seizing, we have another combo that pursues the outside and attacks. So we begin with the grip break. And if the opponent steps back, you parry, palm strike. If they block the palm strike, groin shot. Pi gua jie zha. Pi gua is into wear or to hang something, up, upper block or upper motion. And then jie zha, intercept and smash. This is followed by qin na, but again, linking the steps. It requires you to step into it. This is followed by another fan qing ying feng, another counter to grips and chopping with another combination, this one involving elbows. So here, as the chop comes over, it is followed immediately with a throat strike. So both number 22 and number 10 show a throat strike. But in 22, there's specific emphasis on depressing the arm, grabbing or plucking, and then palm strike to the throat. This is followed by two elbow strikes, and then the interesting technique in number 25, Pi Gua Mai Hu, hang and bury the tiger. 
Wyman, outside is usually called Dragon, and Naaman, inside is usually called Tiger Gate. And so I think this might be part of the meaning. I see it as an anti-clinch move. You open up to block their clinch, knee them, and press them down. Now this is followed by an interesting throw. Uh, it looks fancy, but actually it makes a lot of sense. You're brushing aside both the lead and rear arm. One, two. And so 26, Yin San Kaobi ends up being a knockover knee throw, which is pretty much the only throw that this guy uses. You'll remember the palm strikes that could be knockover knee as well as this, and the leg grabbing all follow the same kind of pattern. Now after a groin shot and a qin na, as well as grip breaks and a kick and more grip breaking, we have a two-handed push. And I think this follows the trend here of this pugilist not wanting to be grabbed or clinched. Obviously, it's quite dangerous for him to be. He can be thrown. So move 34, tui bu shuang tui is retreating step and paired push. You can see how I sort of sink, swallow, I trap the elbows in, and then I move the guy. And here it is again. Boom, send him out. So all in all, I see quite a bit of consistency in this pugilist's linking steps boxing, right? Uh, he has about, what, five punches, uh, six different chops, mostly to do with breaking grips and countering that, uh, two throw attacks, three groin attacks, two elbow strikes, uh, I think he has six instances of using elbow locks or elbow breaks, depending on how successful it is. And he has one kick, uh, one push away, one knee, also used as an anti-clinch move. There are six instances where it could be an over-the-knee throw, two of them involving grabbing the leg, two of them being actually just a throw, and two of them being palm strikes that could end up being knocking the, over the knee. His handwork primarily involves brushing aside, parrying, sealing downwards, or grabbing or plucking uh, to get on the inside or outside and continue his attacks. His attacks are primarily to the face, to the midsection, or to the groin. And almost all of his attacks utilize some kind of linking steps to not only get into position, but to have that forward drive and power behind his movements. One interesting thing is a lot of people say that this form is all about ripping out people's balls. I actually disagree. The move shows up three times, but has three different names. In number seven, it's called Tui Bu Gan Zhou, retreating step, chase elbow, or catch elbow. Next, it shows up as Pie Sen Xiao Zhang, to throw the body back and peel the palm. That's number 16. And in number 28, it's called Pie Sen Chui Bao, which is to throw the body back and grab or take a treasure. The same move three times, with one name being to catch the elbow, with the other being to scrape the palm, and the third being to take the treasure. Uh, although I could see with the last one, maybe it's ripping the balls out. One, it doesn't take that much footwork to rip someone's nuts out, and two, in, in number seven, it's following a body shot, not a nut shot. Another application that people have given is that it's a grip break, but I actually disagree because it's inconsistent with the rest of the form. Most of the movements here involve a defense and offense and footwork, advancing. That's typical for most traditional Chinese martial arts techniques, but purely breaking a grip and retreating does not involve taking an advantage, it only involves escaping. And so it's inconsistent with the rest of the tactics and skills involved. All in all, we see a coherent strategy with very important footwork to carry it out, with movements that are relatively common in the Northern Chinese boxing tradition. If anybody's interested in using this in their fighting, I strongly suggest that you use these movements, use them in a sparring environment, test them out and then use the form as review rather than your primary practice. Starting with the Tao Lu, the form, doesn't actually teach you how to fight.
Me, myself, I learned this form about 15 years ago, and although it's not my style, I strongly encourage anybody who is interested in it, please pick it back up, dust it off, and test out these movements in sparring. I want to leave the world a better place, and that applies to Kung Fu as well. If you were able to learn from this, please give me credit. This is my life, and uh, thank you for following me on my journey. I salute yours. Peace.